Welcome back everyone, my name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our let's play of Shadowrun Hong Kong. Where we left last time, we were uh, looking around the district after kindly vouched for us. I'm going to see if I can get some cyberware. Yeah, you just idle your engine there for a minute and I'll check on that. There's a long silence on the intercom. The door gives several heavy metallic clicks. There's a dull rumble, like heavy bolts sliding back. A green light flashes on the terminal. The door appears unlocked, you can enter the clinic. Well, alright then. We can finally get some chrome. This is the sketchiest place ever to get some cyberware, but okay. This clinic looks like it just hosted a party. Spindly mechanical arms swing from unobtrusive wall mounts, pulling down crepe paper ribbons and scooping food platters and empty beer bottles into biohazard bags. A severely crippled Caucasian man sits in a wheelchair amidst the maelstrom of mess and robotics. He's in his 40s, thick beard, tungsten earrings, beer belly, one cyber eye, both his legs are missing, one at the hip, one at the knee. He has only one arm, and only three fingers remain on his surviving hand. His face and arm show the scars of reconstructive surgery. He grins widely at you, regarding you with bloodshot eyes. He's clearly hungover. Hey, I'm Ambrose. He shows cheerfully in English, his words piling together in a loose Midwestern accent. They call me Ten Arms. Welcome to the Kong fellow UCASian. UCASian? UCASian. There we go. He chuckles, shaking his chest with mirth. A Waldo arm springs to life and swings over to him. Its menacing metal pincers momentarily sets a cigarette between his lips just long enough for him to inhale from it. Finally says you're alright, what can I do for ya? Show me your services. Sure thing, tune-up or spare parts, cyberware. What do we got option-wise here? We can get a data jack, we don't need that. We can get a silver tech cyber arm, which is just plus four HP. We can get a technology cyber leg, which is just plus six hit points, one quickness, which is actually not bad. Um, we can get hand razors, but we can't use them yet, so there's no point on that one. I was kind of hoping that we'd be able to get the monofilament whip that was mentioned, but I don't think that it's available to us just yet. Just the hand razors, which we can get there, and the cyber spur, which is maybe slightly better than their hand razors. Skill wires. Ooh, passive plus one quickness plus one ranged combat. That's actually kind of nice. Only a 0.3 essence cost, too. Not bad. Anywho, uh, we are not going to grab any of that yet. Your front door can stop the bulldozer. Why so fortified? Are you kidding me? Have you any idea how much all the stuff here is worth? This is a high capital operation, and life's dangerous for a guy missing most of his members, tooling up smugglers and criminals. Let me tell you what, though. Someone busts in here, they're going to be in a world of hurt. Ambrose chuckles evilly. There's a lot more than pipes and wires up in the false ceiling, and I've got Kindly's crew and the Club 88 boys on the panic button. They know which side their bread is chromed on. What, are you trying to think of knock trying to knock me over? He laughs uproariously, but it's not clear if he's kidding. Bye, Ambrose. Cheers, Ultimar. Talk to you later. Alright, well, we can't get a monofilament whip yet. I'm sure it'll be here maybe in the next mission or two. I have no idea, actually, but that's just my hope. Let's take a look at our current quest objective. We need to activate the mission computer at our base. We don't really need any guns yet. Uh, we can look around and see if anyone's got missions for us, though. Why is my game having weird moments? Anyways, uh, let's see. Like most troll bouncers, this man's knotted with muscles, but absent are the myriad scars that come with age or indiscretion. His only blemishes are the bony skin gross common to his kind and a single deep scar across his neck and collarbone. You watch yourself in here, or else we check your aerodynamics. How do you mean? Anyone causes trouble? I see how far I can throw them. No fighting, no killing, no sex trade. He lifts an arm, flexing. His muscles jump out like a mass of serpents and steel cabling. His arm is easily as thick as most humans' waists. I don't mess around. Well, I'm going to go into Club 88 and take a look. There are two, three, two people in there and a door we can go into. Let's talk to Callum Kempai. Kafai? Kafai. Better groomed than most of his kind, the young troll nonetheless ruins the effort with his own blatant drunkenness. His eyes are red and his expression foggy, but he otherwise appears to be high-functioning. Have a drink, friend. Have two. There may be something else to chase it with, eh? Not while I'm on the job. He should have my job, then. I'm the Prince of Club 88. Chosen, you might say. You're part of the family that owns this place? You're a shrewd one, friend. I'm the heir apparent, and my birthright to peddle chems to every sniffer that passes through our gates. What do you say? Need something to pick you up or bring you down? Can you tell me what I might find around here? Not a hell of a lot, but I suppose it depends what you're in the market for. I'm your man for chemistry. My ma offers an assortment of firearms in the back. Everything else here is just glitter and smoke. 
If you're looking for tech, Law is place sells all the techno bubbles you could ask for. Just walk towards the giant blue hollow sign that gives everyone a headache. Out further on the same dock, Reliable Matthew is your basic used drone salesman. He's the only game in town for that sort of stuff. If you're needing magical what's-its, try the parlor of five phases. Haven't a clue about this stuff myself, but both places certainly smell legit from the street. You're better off staying here though. I could set you up with an ampule of something really smooth. Well, what do you have? Just drugs. I should sell my taco to him, but I didn't bring it with me. Well, I did bring it with me. We could sell our taco to him. We don't really need it. Here, buy my drugs. Thank you. Alright, what's this guy have to say? There's only one way to describe the troll haunting the back of Club 88, weathered. It's as if the man has been carved from granite and battered by the crash of waves and salty winds over the course of decades. Welcome to Club 88. No killing, no fighting, no sex trade. Rules are rules, are you the one who makes them? In part, along with my better half, I am Henry Kafai, co-owner of the club. If you're looking for guns, speak to my wife. If you're looking for pheromos, speak to my son Callum. And if you're looking for trouble, you'll be seeking my son Frederick, briefly. I'll leave you be. Well, let's go in the back and see what's going on with the gun situation. Might as well. There's two doors. And the music, like, got quieter a little bit. That is a hefty turret. The older troll woman has a striking Amazonian quality. When she was younger, she must have really turned heads. Can I help you? I'm usually beyond helping, but what can you offer? Guns or a swift kick out of the door if you mess with me or mine. This is my family's place. Me, my husband, and our two boys. Now do you have business with me? I have no time for window shoppers. What do you got? Firearms from all over the world. From Ares to Walther and everything in between. You in the market? I think it's Walther, actually, but whatever. Let's take a look. That's a lot of guns. I kind of want a sniper rifle, but I really actually just kind of want to get in monofilament whip. Because I've heard it's a lot of fun, and I'm just sort of waiting on that. I'm going to save my money for that monofilament whip. We have an assault rifle that works pretty well for now. We'll see how the next mission goes anyways. If it goes terribly, we might have to upgrade our firearm capacity. But I think we're just going to go to the mission computer now. I don't think there's much else to do in this area at the moment. There's no quests popping up. No one seems to want to give us a side quest. Ooh, maybe Spider Shen has something to say to us. Oh my god, a butterfly or moth just hit my window really hard. Despite the wind and rain pelting Heioi, the proprietor of the stall, a monk judging from their outfit, is unconcerned. The monk's expression is indifferent, though hardly placid or serene. Muscles show as tightly wound metal bands beneath the skin, ready to snap in any direction without warning. What's more, the monk's robes are anything but ordinary. Certainly, silk makes up the base outfit, but it's paired with high-impact ballistic armor, heavy-duty boots, and a bandolier of throwing knives. The table in front of you is arrayed with a wide variety of melee weapons, charms, jade pendants, and other magic or mystical accoutrements. Beneath an awning in the rear are rows upon rows of cages, each housing some variety of exotic reptile or insect. These in turn are flanked by jars and boxes of Chinese herbs, incense powders, and inks. The monk stares at you, spares you only the shortest of glances as you approach. I'm Monk Shen. Most people in Taiyue call me Spider Shen on account of the spiders back there. You're not a local, not by a long shot. It's definitely a statement and not a question. What tipped you off? Shen smiles crookedly, two teeth peeking out from beneath thin lips, body language. You're not afraid to look me in the eye for one, for another your clothes, not in fashion here in Hong Kong. Swords, knives, clubs, I sell it all. I make most of these, but if I can't, I got friends who can. If you need incense or selves for, me or for meditation, I make and sell those too. And if you're joint at stake, I can give you acupuncture. Shen places both hands on the table, leaning over it and gives you a wicked grin. What can I show you? Where's... Katana, machete, street monk outfit... Spiked fists and throwing knives. Nothing like a monofilament whip. Damn. Alright, bye. I'm good. I'm good. I don't need any of your stuff. Thank you. We're gonna go do a mission. Let's go take some form of a mission anyways. Alright, mission computer. Step one. Your workstation and mission computer. The cool blue tones of the workstation's main menu fill the screen. A blinking message in the upper right corner notifies you that you have six unread messages. One sec. I need to check on our crew to see if they want to talk about anything. And then we'll you a mission. So I'm getting a stuffy nose, which is annoying me. Wu's cabin appears to be the only clean spot on this bolt hole. His equipment is neatly laid out on his bedding, grouped by type, arranged just so. He is currently in the process of cleaning his weapon with meticulous care. Well, that's that, I guess. We're runners now. Yep, I think it's time to catch up. Could be. He stops for a moment, stares at the weapon in his hand. That's why I'm maintaining my equipment. It helps me focus my brain, work through stuff. 
He sighs and lowers the rifle. Now's as good a time as any, I guess. Where do you want to start? Let's talk about Raymond. Okay, shoot. What do you think's going on with him? I don't know, Altamar. He was clearly obsessed with the walled city and whatever prosperity is. He sounds like a sleepwalker trying to stumble his way through a dream or something. A sleepwalker who hires Shadowrunners from Triad bosses. Raymond was smart, smart as hell. I'm sure he had a reason for using Kindly Cheng as a fixer. Why do you think he came to Hong Kong? Well, he's from here, right? It sounds like he had unfinished business that he needed to take care of before. You think he's dying? Maybe. Just something to think about. Did he say anything about me after I left? You know, Raymond, Altamar, he taught us what he wanted to teach us, told us what he wanted us to know, and everything else was met with a wall of good-natured silence. He used to say, You are the masters of the unspoken word, Mr. Wu. Once it's out of your mouth, it is out of your control. So no, after you left, he never said a word about it. Not a word. Let's talk about something else. Ask away. Let's talk about being Shadowrunners. What's there to say? I worked my ass off to pull myself out of the gutter and make something of my life. I did what it took to earn my bronze, and now I'm a mercenary hiding in the shadows of a foreign country doing dirty jobs that the corpse need to keep off the books. It's the reverse of everything I've ever wanted. You seem to be taking it pretty darn or pretty damn well, so let me ask you something. You said this is all about money. That was time for you to cash in, was that true? No, that's what I told kindly. Then what's the real reason? I could just, like, say the same thing again. Hmm. I'm running the shadows until I, we find who killed Raymond, then someone's gonna pay. Be careful of taking the road to revenge, Altamar. It usually ends up at two grave sites. I need to understand what happened to him and who's responsible. I need justice. What's your opinion of Kindly Cheng? I'd say she's got us right where she wants us, right under her thumb. What do you want to talk about specifically? What do you think she wants from us? As long as her network keeps delivering information about Raymond, I don't care. At least not for now. We need to stay with her. We have no other connections to Hong Kong. Without her, we're dead in the water. Think we can trust her? A triad boss? An underground fixer? No, I don't think we can trust her. But as long as we all share the same goals, we should be okay. I wish I had your confidence. Look, it's simple. She provides jobs. We do jobs. She gets info about Raymond and that plastic-faced man. And we figure out what the hell's going on. We figure out what's going on. She doesn't end up in the trunk of a car at the bottom of the river. Everyone wins. What about this plastic-faced man? Creepy dudes are nothing new to me. Even well-dressed corporate dudes. Between the gangers we grew up with and the shit I've run into as a cop, I've seen all kinds. I just want to know who he is and who he works for. We should keep an eye on Strangler Bao. We should keep an eye on everyone, and that guy is definitely no exception. I've seen plenty of cold killers in the Barrens, and plenty more since I joined Lone Star. This guy's the real deal. I'm not sure he knows what the word remorse even means. You should stay clear of him. I'll be careful. Uh-huh, I can see that. Something else. Gobbit and Isabel. They seem competent, considering how young they are, but then again, they sound like they've been taking care of themselves since they were pretty young. The three of us worked well in the walled city. Based on that, I bet the four of us would make a solid crew. Gobbit talks to rats. She's a rat shaman, Eltamar. Of course she talks to rats. Remember that guy in the Baron's Joy Joeed? Small-time BTL guy. Lived at the Royal Apartments. He had a skunk shaman working guard duty for him. Covered him when he slept. Guess he figured that no matter what, the stink would wake him up. Never happened to him. Heard he got clipped a couple years back. He moved up a bunch in the BTL business, broadened his market, took over the Royale, grabbed the penthouse apartment for himself. Heard he ran afoul of some runner who took apart his whole crew. Heard he traded his skunk shaman for a hellhound. Smart move. That sounds like something we ran into either in Dragonfall or Shadowrun Returns. You can't get that dream, or I can't get that dream I had out of my head. You said you had one too, right? Yeah, yours sounds like a nasty one. I don't remember much about mine. I was pretty creeped out by our run into the walled city. Between that and all the drama, I'd be surprised if I didn't have a nightmare. He shrugs. Was the walled city in your dreams? Of course the walled city was in my dreams. It was a nightmare, wasn't it? It gives you a lopsided grin. Was it your dream too? Sure looked like it. I'm not sure I'm surprised. The walled city is more than just another slum and a sprawl. Hell, it's a sprawl. And of course we dreamed about it. The feeling I had there has stayed with me. It felt thick, heavy, and I got this overwhelming feeling of, I don't know, wretchedness, I guess? Did it feel any different from other nightmares you've had? He takes his time, thinks about his answer for a bit before he responds. You know how sometimes you'll be mad at a friend in a dream and then wake up still mad at him? Then you treat him like he did something wrong when you see him? It kind of felt like that to me, like I dreamed I was swimming towards a bright light, and when I woke up, I was out of breath from the effort. What do you remember about yours? Just little snatches of things. He puts his hands on his hips and concentrates. The walled city was breathing and it had teeth everywhere. And there was a tunnel that was so bright I had to shut my eyes. And Raymond was there. 
He was either kneeling or lying down. I can't remember which, but he was crying. That's what made me wake up. The sound of my father crying. That's all he has to say. Later's good. I want to do some cardio, work off some steam. Then it's rack time for me. You should do the same, Eltimar. A couple hundred push-ups would, would do you good. Thanks for the offer, but I think I'll have a good drink instead. He shrugs. Here, I'll talk to you later. I don't want to do push-ups. I just got back from the gym. Let's talk to Isabel. Isabel's cabin is an exercise in controlled chaos. Her living space is utterly dominated by an enormous jury-rigged computer. Serpentine cables snake from component to component, tying dozens of obsolete terminals and cyberdecks together into a single colossal machine. This is my personal machine. If you're looking for your mission computer, it's downstairs. She doesn't bother looking up. You see that? She's elbow deep in the guts of an obsolete cyberdeck. One of half a dozen that have been wired into a computer with braided cables. Actually, I have something to talk to you. Got a second? There's a long pause, and she trips out a response. We're talking now, aren't we? Yeah, I guess so. Got a few questions, though. She leans in, scrutinizing the innards of the obsolete deck. Go ahead, I'm not stopping you. Have you been having weird dreams recently? Her body goes still. Yes, I think everyone has. Me too, I've been having horrible nightmares. I know, it happens more often than you think. She tilts her head in the direction of the walled city. This kind of mass psychosis was common where I grew up. Everyone got it. What's causing it? I don't know. Slowly, she begins rummaging through the guts of the obsolete cyber deck again. I don't think I want to. Hold up, I think I know what it is. Prosperity is going to be some sort of machine or something, and it's causing these nightmares. I don't know why. I don't have that answer yet, but I think that's the main story that we're going to be following now. I'd like to get to know you better. Tell me something about yourself. Something? Okay, I don't like small talk. Does that count? Yeah, of course. If you don't want to talk, we don't have to talk. Thank you for not pushing it. It's nothing personal. I just don't think I'm a very interesting person. It's quite a machine you're working on. Care to tell me about it? She's my pet pod project. I call her the Octopus. She waves a hand at the tangle of thick power cables that radiate out from the machine's central core. You might be able to guess why. Did you do this all yourself? Mm-hmm. She yanks a fried chip from the deck's motherboard and sets it neatly aside, then fumbles in a nearby bin for a replacement. I had to make do with whatever I could find as a kid. It taught me a lot about being self-sufficient. What's it made of? Whatever I could find, busted terminals, obsolete cyberdex, aftermarket memory from Maximum Law's dumpster. Scavengers would kill for the stuff in the walled city, but out here people throw it away. She chuckles to herself as she eases a card into an empty expansion slot. Most deckers are early adopters. They buy whatever's newest, shell out huge amounts of Nuyen in hopes of riding the bleeding edge. Stupid. Why? Because I can have five of last year's model for a quarter of the price of that Wiz's new cyber deck, and after I've finished daisy chaining them together, the machine that I built will run circles around your hot new deck. Yeah, and you need a flatbed truck to carry it. Do we look like we're hurting for space to you? She rummages in a bin to her left and pulls out a stick of solid state memory. It disappears into the deck she's working on. I've got a whole boat to work with, your cabin included, if I told Gobbit I needed it. Be my guess, I wouldn't mind. A long pause, huh? Well, I was joking, but if you're really okay with it, I might someday. We'll see. Any thoughts about that last run? Isabel shivers, looking away from you. I'm still mad at you for making me go back there. I say it hasn't changed, but it seems like it has for the worse. It's just like I remembered it, but darker, meaner. The perfect place for thugs like Strangler Bao and his goons. It was a good move to avoid getting in a fight with Bao's men. I wouldn't shed a tear for a single one of them, but kindly is ruthless. Going against her wishes is a good way to buy a one-way ticket into a shallow grave. She never forgets the people who do what she asks, though, especially when she expected them to screw up. Anything else you want to know? What about your portable gear, your cyberdex software, that kind of thing? I guess the job done. Might not be top of the line, but I'm comfortable using it in the field. If you should happen across any more of the advanced hardware or software, either on the job or on the discount racket laws techno palace, I'm not above taking donations, but barring that, I'm fine with what I've got. Your call. How about the ambush? I'd rather not. I lost friends there. Sorry. Didn't mean to pry. You don't have to apologize, just change the subject. You don't like talking about things other than your computer very much, do you? There's a long pause before she responds. When she does, she sounds vaguely hurt. I prefer not to. Nothing personal, it's just the way I am. There's nothing wrong with that. I just want to know who I'm running with, don't you? Yes, you're still a mystery to me. There's a long pause. I don't like mysteries, but I do enjoy solving them. She turns, giving you her full attention. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you a question, something personal, and after you've given me an answer, you get to ask me something. Think of it like a game of questions. We take turns until one of us wants to quit. Deal? Deal. You go first. Ask away. She studies your face. We'll start off easy. Tell me what you really think about Duncan. He can be a pain in the ass, but he's definitely like a brother to me. Interesting. 
her eyes slit to the doorway of Gobbit's cabin, then the corner of her mouth tilts upwards in a slight smile, and a little familiar. Well, you've, earned, you've answered my question, I guess that makes it your turn. How long have you been running the shadows with Gobbit? That's a good question. I guess about four years now? A decent stretch by anyone's reckoning. And that would make it my turn, she pauses considering. So tell me, what was your connection to Raymond Black? He was like a father to me, me and Duncan. He got us out of the Barrens. In that case, I'm sorry for your loss. Losing the ones you love is hard. Your turn. Ask me a question and I'll give you an answer. How'd you guys meet? Her brow furrows. After a moment, she screws her eyes shut. We met as kids in the walled city. My prison was her playground. Did I touch a nerve? Of course not. I'm fine. She shifts her gaze to the octopus. I just have a hard time remembering those days. My childhood is kind of a blur. And that brings us back to my turn. She gestures at the cabin walls around you. You enjoy it, don't you? Living like this, working the shadows. Yeah, Raymond Black was wrong. This is what I was born to do. She nods slowly. I knew it. I could read it all over you. Your turn again. Go ahead, ask me something. Where'd you learn to deck? The Wampoa. I lived there for a while after escaping the walled city, but people there were difficult. We didn't get along, but it was a great pr place to learn. My turn again. And I think my last question for you. You're stuck here, marooned. You and Duncan both. He's obviously unhappy with the situation. He keeps going on about the things he left behind, but what about you? Is there anything you want to get back to? Nothing worth mentioning. Truth be told, I'm enjoying the change of scenery. Nothing? There isn't anything about your old life that you'll miss? I don't know whether to envy you or feel sorry for you. She glances down at the clock on her desk like an antique model. An antique model with physical hands that look like it was wrenched out of a submarine. A frown spreads across her face. Shit, it's way later than I thought, and I've still got a long way to go before the oct octopus is fixed. She begins to turn away, her attention fixed on the stack of partially disassembled cyberdecks arrayed in front of her. Aren't you forgetting something? She stops and plays fidgets. If you got another question, go ahead and ask, but be qu quick about it. I need you to tell you, tell, tell me what you can about the walled city. Her voice goes cold. Why? Because Raymond Black wanted to go in there, and somebody destroyed my life to keep him from doing that. Her cheeks flush just like they did the last time. She averts her eyes. No, I'm sorry, but no. Later, maybe, but not now. All right, Isabel. Maybe next time. Blinking, she turns away and buries herself in the octopus's splayed innards. Please excuse me. I got work to do. Uh, we'll quickly do the last conversation, then we'll call it a video. So, Gobbit. Gobbit's nest is pretty much what you'd expect. Piles of clothes on the ground and overflowing garbage bins surrounded by stacks of instant noodle packets and towers of tinned oysters. Ew, gross. Avant-garde posters haphazardly thumbtacked to the walls, overlapping in some places and peeling in others. It feels a lot like an art school dorm room. Gobbit reclines in a corner, cradling a bowl of soup in her hands. At her feet, a cast iron pot simmers away on an electrical hot plate. The contents are typical Hong Kong comfort food. Chicken-style soya broth. Elbow macaroni, tinned ham, and a heaping scoop of egg-flavored mysoprotein. As you wind your way through the piles of dirty laundry, Gobbit slowly lifts her head from her bowl to acknowledge you. Hey, a Seattle. She chews on the words, along with a mouthful of cheap pasta. A corner of her mouth curls, curls up into a half-smile. How's tricks? They'd be a uh, nope. Things have been better. Things have been worse. That's the attitude. Very stoic, very strong. It's downright inspiring. She skims an oily slab of faux ham off the top of her soup and pops it into her mouth. Yeah, you want to tell me what you're doing in my bedroom? I'm assuming you're not here to admire the view. How'd you decide on the name Gobbit, anyway? I didn't. She pops a noodle in her mouth and chews. My mom did. So Gobbit is your given name? Your mother named you after a wad of meat? She shrugs. Yeah, sure. I don't think she knew what it meant. She just thought it sounded pretty. You should get used to that, by the way. People here in Hong Kong like to stand out, and choosing unique names is one of the ways they do it. Had any nightmares recently? Yeah, I have. We all have. Everyone in town. Me too, and Isabel. We both just had the same nightmare. Let me guess, you saw the walled city, a black whirlpool, and teeth. Thousands and thousands of teeth. She holds up a hand. You don't need to answer. I already know that I'm right, because I just had the same dream. Creepy, I know. Her voice goes quiet. The dreams are coming from inside the walled city. I'm sure of it. All the negative energy pent up in there. All that pain and anger and poisonous key is leaking out. And while we sleep, it's getting into us. If you're so sure of that, why stay in Kowloon? Why not pick up and leave? I was planning on it, but now with APB... With the APB in place, Andy Chang is the only thing standing us, or standing between us and a bullet in the head. Believe me, I'd leave if I could, but I'm a lot more frightened of the HKPF than I am of a few bad dreams. At least the dreams can't hurt us, right? If you say so. She tries on a smile, fails, does her best to laugh it off. Don't worry, Seattle, we're fine here. But uh, let's talk about something else, huh? I don't like thinking about the walled city very much. Too many old fears and bad feelings. If you're up to talking about it, I wanted to go over the ambush back on the docks with you. 
Yeah, she nods, slowly frowning. Yeah, I figured you would. That was a hell of a thing, right? You could say that. It was fucking awful. Nightjar and Gutshot were two of the strongest men I've ever known. Quality Shadowrunners, both of them. I've watched the suits fight through situations that would kill anyone and come out on top. And how'd they go out? She mimes, holding a rifle, makes a show of peering down the scope. Bang, dead, bang, dead. Or bang, bang, dead, dead. No blaze of glory, no final speech, just extinguished. Smashed like bugs. They went quick and clean. We should all be so lucky. She shakes her head from side to side. No way. Not me. When I die, I want to know what's coming. Just winking out like that is the worst thing I can imagine. Even a drawn-out painful death would have been better. At least I'd have time to say my goodbyes. I guess I can see that. Of course you can, because I'm right. You don't want to go gently into that good night any more than I do. She plunges her spoon back in the bowl, sloshing ham-scented broth all over the rim. Nightshot, or Nightjar and Gutshot, they never got the opportunity to choose. It's fucking depressing. Carter didn't get to choose either. She went down in the Alpha Strike just like your teammates did. Yeah, she seemed like a good woman, tough, skilled, light on her feet, but in the end, it didn't matter because some asshole with a rifle made, it de made the decision half a mile away. She falls quiet, staring into her soup. You got us out of there, though. We're all still alive because of you. She absentmindedly raises her bowl to her shoulders. A rat crawls over the slope of her back and lowers its head to lap at the broth. It was more rat than me. She's the one who grabbed me by the gut and led us to where that sewer entrance was. All I did was follow. I'd like to learn more about Rat. What kind of totem is she? She slurps thoughtfully at her soup. A clever one. She's gotten me more, er, gotten me out of more trouble than I care to mention. Gotten me into a fair amount of it, too, but I can always count on her to lead me out of hot water when I need her to. I can feel it in my belly, you know? Sort of a tugging sensation. I've long since learned to follow it. I wasn't aware that totems took such direct control of their shamans. Usually they don't. Me and Rat, we have a sort of special bond. She takes care of me... And I've always done my best to take care of her. Another set of beady eyes peer, er, blinks up at you from Gobbit's hip. A second rat scurries up on her shoulder to join the first. And to pamper her earthly children, these two, like these two, meet madness and folly. Um, hey. They say hi. She brushes her fingers across the white rat's mottled coat. Don't trust folly. She bites. Do you always let your rats drink out of your own bowl? She shrugs. Sure, why not? We're all part of the same nest. Is that... hygienic? Probably not, but I've never gotten sick, so... She raises an eyebrow, scoops a noodle out of the bowl, and pops it into her mouth with a satisfied smile. How did you come across madness and folly? She raises an eyebrow. I looked outside, I mean, the rats. Hong Kong isn't experiencing a rodent shortage or anything, so you just, uh, pick them up off the street. Yeah, think of them as rescue vermin. You could probably do the same if you wanted to. It's easy, just walk into any alleyway, er, alleyway in Kowloon. After sundown and stick your hand in the first dumpster or storm drain you come across, keep fishing around until you touch fur. Might have to try that. Uh, you probably shouldn't. She scr she continues to brush Folly's coat. The creature chirps happily at her touch. Odds are about 50-50 that you get your hand chewed off. I'd probably feel bad about that. You seem pretty comfortable with all of this. Been running the shadows for a while? She dips her chin. Long time. Started when I was just a kid. You're still a kid now, Gobbit. What are you, 19? She rolls her shoulders, shrugs, something like that. Your guess is as good as mine. Doesn't change the fact that I've been doing this for years, and you started yesterday. Matter of fact, Seattle... I think I'm going to make a project of you, take you under my wing, so to speak. You need a wizened mentor. Might as well be me. Sure, why not? I could use the advice, and I don't see Isabel volunteering for the job anytime soon. You're in? Good. So the next time you visit, I'm going to teach you all about being a Shadowrunner. She stifles a yawn. You're going to benefit from my bountiful experience. Wait and see. Looking forward to it. Gobbit stretches, stifles a yawn. Her rats scurry from her shoulders down to her hips. She taps the simmering pot on the floor with her boot. The soup inside is reduced down to a thick, viscous gravy. You know, Seattle, this has been a nice chat and all. But it's getting really late and I still have the rest of a hot pot to power through. So, without wanting to get this to get awkward, she glances towards the door. Sorry about that, I had to pause for one sec. I could help you with that if you wanted. Thanks, but no thanks. Smirking, she brushes Folly's coat with the knuckles of her left hand. You can go get your own food. Now would be a good time. Alright, I get it. Talk to you later, Gobbit. Yeah, we'll do that. It'll be fun. Alright, so that's the end of that. I guess we're done our video. It's been like half an hour of solid talking to our teammates and other people. So in the next video, we're going to go to our mission computer for real this time. Grab a mission and continue on our way. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time. Take care.